From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. I'm your host, William Townsend, coming to you from the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. And we're going to get right into our subject today. Our subject today is faith and finances. But before we do, I want to send a prayer out to friends of ours who are headed to Zambia, Africa on the missionary work. Blessed to be a blessing. And they're bringing a lot of clothes to to the young ladies over there. It's a girls' school. I'm going to say a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you cover them on the flight. Bless the hands of those pilots, Lord. Cover that plane. Bless them when they get there, Lord, to do the work of the kingdom, to do the work of the ministry, to evangelize, oh, Father God, in your name. Cover that family, Lord. And I pray for the nine young ladies that are going to be joining the school over in Zambia, Africa, who have survived much adversity from the adversary. And I ask that you bless them. I'm sorry, it's 12 young ladies that you bless them, oh, Father God. Watch them and keep over them. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. So our first thing we want to talk about is faith. I'm going to give you the definition. Faith, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Next word we're going to talk about is finances. And here's the definitions for that. Money available to a government, business, or individual system that includes the circulation of money, the providing of banks and credit, and the making of investments. So when we put our, our paychecks, our account, bank account, and invest our money into our 401ks, annuity accounts, invest into stocks, pay our credit cards, we're showing our faith in that financial institution that's not only here in the United States, but it's all global. So, what about God? What about what is your faith? Your, what about God? Your faith in God is your investment into the kingdom. Go to Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So our investment in God's kingdom is faith. That's our investment. Let's go to Luke 16 and 13. No servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So you can't serve uh, God. You can't serve finances. Some people put their faith, all their faith in their finances. Put all their faith in their investments, their 401k, they put their faith in banks, in real estate, gold, oil, uh, platinum, commodities. They put their, their faith in these things. And as you know, the world is unstable. What is a good investment day next week? <laughs> it'll bottom out and you'll lose your money. You read the entire chapter of Luke 16. It, it's about material wealth. And it's about corruption. Remember, money is the root of all evil. You continue. So you use your finances to invest in the world. What do we use to invest in God's kingdom? Let's go to Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So therefore, our investment in the kingdom of God 
is not just faith, also obedience to his word. In order for us to have faith, in order to be obedient to something, we have to first have faith in it. We have to believe in the system. We have to believe that it, it'll yield us something other than what we have. So, we put our faith in God's kingdom. We become obedient to his word. That will bring forth fruit in our lives. But, remember this. All fruit has seeds. Now, these are the fruits of the spirit. Understand, when you walk, when we walk in the fruit of the spirit, we're actually not only walking in it, but we also are planting seeds from the fruit. The seeds are planted when people see us walk upright. The seeds are planted when people will see our obedience to God. The seeds are planted when people see our favor from God. The seeds are planted when people see us walk in the fruit of the spirit. So we actually are walking in the fruit and planting seeds at the same time. It's amazing how, you know, I've, I read that scripture and God gave me revelation of that. I said, man, every fruit has a seed. So as we walk in the spirit, we're actually going for fruit and planting seeds at the same at the same time. Let's go to Psalms 84 and 11 through 12. For the Lord God is a sun, a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you. So as long as we put our trust and our faith in God, we'll be prosperous and we we will overcome a lot of our problems that we have. You know, we oftentimes try to sow uh, finances to get ourselves out of situations. Finances is just a, a small part of the sowing process. God is more interested in our walk more interested in our uprightness that's why you have so many people they give give and give and give but they don't see the fruit they should see because they're not walking in the spirit you give all this money but yet you backbite you talk about people you cut people up you you you're causing problems in the church it means just you're doing everything contrary to the fruit of the spirit God clearly says that's how those of faith are to walk so if you have faith in God you will seek him and his direction and his instruction. When direction and instruction is revealed to you, you must obey. And then you must invest the time and effort. You must invest time and effort in order to yield a return on your harvest or yield a return or your harvest. So just like you heard the term seed, time and harvest. Also too, faith without works is dead. So, when you have faith in God, you be obedient. And the obedience that you that you carry out is actually the works. God may give you instruction to do something and based on your obedience will yield the fruit or you will yield a blessing or you will yield a harvest. The same way it works with the financial system. Same the same way. Uh, it's the same process. Those who have faith in the in that system seek direction and instruction and once they receive that once they get that they will follow it and it will tell them where to, to invest their money and when they can yield the best return and then after their seed time of harvest in the world system they will <laughs> reap a bountiful harvest if the stock market upholds if the markets of the world stand fast now it's amazing People are quicker to take a risk in the world system where there's an if, and, and a but, but they won't take a risk in God's system where there's absolute, where there's a promise, where there's a covenant. We won't invest in that. We, we will invest in the world system and hope our finances or our monies bring us back a return that we're looking for. Remember, the woman with the issue of blood and all her money on doctors but was healed by the hem of Jesus garment. So she suffered. She sold long suffering and she sold faith. He yielded joy and peace and mercy. From the Lord and the miracle. So it's, it's, it's like you sow spiritually. To reach spiritually. 
on earth as it is in heaven. Our faith, our obedience, our love and our walking with God is what brings us prosperity. That's what brings us prosperity in our health, finances, whatever area. Let's go to uh, Mark 13, 41, 44. And I'm just going to paraphrase it. The woman who sold the two mites. He just said, blessed is she because she gave out of her lack or everyone else gave out their abundance. He sold in faith. So faith and meekness he yielded love and favor from the Lord. And according to the word, because she did that, it wasn't put in the Bible, but I know her life turned around because the Lord eyes were upon her. So I know her life turned around. She was a widow. So I know blessings came to her. You know, here's another one. Matthew 17, 24. Peter told Jesus that there was no money to pay tribute or taxes. Jesus told him basically to go fishing. And the fish he caught had a coin in his mouth and it was enough to pay tribute. So, what did Peter sow? Peter sold faith, so humbleness or meekness, and he sold love because he was obedient to God. What did he yield? He yielded joy and he yielded also revelation and an increase in his faith. And also he got a get out of jail free pass because in those times, if you didn't pay tribute or taxes, it would quickly lock you up. So the point that I'm making here is that we have to learn how to be obedient to God's system. So we is somebody out there that is listening. God has told you to sow into a ministry. You haven't done it. Somebody out there. God has told you to give to a certain charitable organization. You haven't done it. Some people out there that God has told to give certain people in the church some money or help them be back and forth to work or just help them some kind of way. You haven't done it. God tells some of you out there to pray for people, go on the fast with people. You won't do it. So you got to understand, you know, it's like Cain and Abel. God told Cain, if you do good, I'll bless you, too. But we had to be obedient to the spirit of God. You know, if God tells you to give a ministry an X amount of dollars, then you give that ministry what he told you to give. Not half of that, not a third, not a quarter, but you give all because we think and I say we have tunnel vision. We can't always expect the blessing to come back as money all the time. Sometimes that seed you sown is for a family member that you don't even know about. You've sown that seed and because you've sown that seed, God's going to answer a prayer for your children. Because you've sown a seed, God is going to answer a prayer for your husband or your spouse. So we, we, we talk about we want to get married and Lord, I want a house, I want a car. Sometimes he, it has nothing to do with money. Sometimes God say, I want you to stay late in service and just pray with me a little longer. Stay in my presence a little longer. And you stay and God gives you revelation on how to give a house. It's been times where I've been in church and haven't even thought about finances, haven't thought about money, just sitting there praising God. Service over with. Everybody's leaving out and I'm still in prayer. My wife and I are still in prayer. And we get a phone call while we're sitting in, pray in prayer. And somebody calls and said, yeah, uh, God told me to give you guys this. A uh, uh, God told me to uh, write you guys a check for this amount. We wasn't even asking that. We're just in the presence of God. So a lot of times your healing will come in the presence of God. Sometimes your, your strength will come in the presence of God, being obedient to his will, being obedient to the purpose that he's designed for you on this earth to do. We all have, how can I say this? We all have a work to do. We all have a work. I'll just mention about some friends of mine that were going over to Africa and they walked out on faith. And they believed God and they were obedient to what God told them. And everybody in the neighborhood donated clothes and well, I mean they went to buy stuff to give them. They had a truck full of suitcases that they were going to take over to Africa to bless those young ladies in a in a girl school. And it it's just it was just amazing. It's amazing. I've known him for about three years. I remember when she first started. You know, but every year God has increased it. I watched every year God has increased it and their whole family's going. Usually just her and her daughter, but her husband is going also. The entire family's going. So it's just amazing how God, all he needs is a, is a little faith and a little obedience. 
can do you can do wonders. You can do miracles. So some people out there, God has told you to go lay hands on a person in the hospital or one of your family members. You haven't done it. And you wonder why your prayers aren't being answered. Giving all this money to the church, but Lord, how come nothing's moving? Well, it's more to just giving money to the church. <laughs> and that's what we have to get out of that tunnel vision. It's more than just sowing money into your church. That's what God requires. That's like if you don't pay your gas bill and your light bill and your water bill, it's going to get shut off. But we're talking about that extra blessing, the, the above and beyond blessing. It's all required for us to pay tithes and offering, but we're talking about above and beyond. Woman gave all that she had. It wasn't because she put in two two mites or two pennies. It was because she gave all that she had in faith. She heard the word of God and she was obedient. Trust in him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But we have to understand that that is God's will and that is his purpose for our life. That's what he calls us to do, to be obedient. Walk in the fruit of the spirit I don't care what your title is we all are commissioned or supposed to walk in the fruit of the spirit if you are not walking in the fruit of the spirit then you are fulfilling the lust of the flesh that's scripture that's the word so let us be mature let us grow in the faith let us continue to walk towards the kingdom remember everything in this world is temporary we're not to hold fast to every, anything in this world. We're not to covet anything of this world. The Bible says he who looks back is unfit for the kingdom. Now, I, I hopefully I don't have anybody here that's unfit. But we all should be striving to better ourselves. Christ calls us to mature. Be ye perfect as Christ is perfect. The other word for perfect is mature. We're supposed to be mature in the faith. God calls all of us to a level of maturation. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Not a man, I put away childish things. When we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, you will be surprised. Revelation you get, how you will just walk into blessings. I mean, you will literally be surprised. I've been in areas where, I mean, I've been on jobs where people just walk up, and, you know, I've, I've, maybe I've done something wrong, or sometimes people pull you into what I call a circle of mess, or they'll pull you into their garbage. And before you know it, you're getting cussed out and blamed for something that you didn't have anything to do with. So what you have to understand is I've been in those situations and instead of reacting like they expected, instead of cussing them out and going off, I walked in the fruit. I, I was listening to the Holy Ghost as they cussed me out. I, and, I, and I talked to them and I was telling them, I said, well, whatever problem you have, it has nothing to do with me. That's anger in your heart. That's your problem. Now I walk off. And that will get that person's attention. That was like, wow, you know, what's up with this guy? I just cussed him out up and down and buried, I, I insulted him in front of the whole crowd. And he didn't even he didn't even respond the way I thought he was going to respond. I've had people come tell me that he said, man, I've never seen nothing like that. This guy just cussed you out for something you had nothing to do with. And you didn't even you know, you didn't even lift a finger. You didn't punch nothing. You didn't flip nothing over. You didn't cuss him back. out. I said, for what was what the purpose? Then that opens the door to minister to that person. Then the person that cusses you out will humble themselves and come back and apologize to you. So by you walking in the spirit, being an example, you just sowed the seed. Now the, 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 the seed you've sown is coming back to you. Now that person that just insulted you is coming back and humbling themselves, walking in meekness to apologize for offending you. So the when you walk in the fruit, you're actually sowing seeds. So, you know, we have to understand there's more to it than just putting a lump sum of money in the offering bucket. You know, Jesus talked about that in the same in that scripture. He said they gave out of their abundance. She gave out of what she had. She gave out of faith, knowing that God is her supply, knowing God is her increase. So if God is telling you to sow into a ministry, if he's telling you to go lay hands on somebody, you never know. You may cast the devil off that person. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. Just be obedient. Just do what God has instructed you to do. Don't worry about the outcome. Nothing may happen at all at that moment. It may take you two or three times. You never know. But just do what the Lord asks you to do. And you will be surprised of the outcome. We got to step out of our box, people. We got we to gotta, we gotta go out of our comfort zone. And we got to go where God, where people won't go. We got to say what people won't say. 
Sometimes God may tell you, be truthful. Tell them the truth. Lord, if I tell them the truth, this is going to happen and, and that happened. God knows that person better than you know them. It's, it's been people I went to, I, I just knew they were going to cuss me out. Man, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about God. Man, that's, it ain't Sunday. But I was obedient. Did what God told me to do. Went to that person. And they will come and say, wow, man, that's amazing. I was just thinking about that last night. So God had already prepared their hearts to hear what you had to say. He already prepared their hearts to hear or to receive the ministry or the ministering, the ministry that you have in your spirit. He already prepared them to hear the instruction that you had for them through the Holy Spirit. And that increases their faith. So now you just sowed another, you walked in the, in the fruit. Now you've sown the seed in them. Now you've increased their faith. Now they're walking in, in part of the fruit of the spirit. So it's it's it's, it's amazing. It's, we got to get beyond just sowing money all the time. That's that's part of it. That's that's part of it. That's a very small part of it. But a lot of it is our work. So everything we do here, it says, uh, don't put your riches on earth. The moth and rust do corrupt. It's thieves come and steal. Our riches go up into heaven, the heavens. King of kings, the Lord, the Lord is basically our bank teller. He has a vault with all our stuff in it. <laughs> and that's how we have to see it. That's how we have to see it. Remember, the Bible said, render what's to Caesar to Caesar and what's to God to God. The Caesar is the financial institution. Nothing wrong with investing your money and doing that. But don't forget, you have to render what's to God to God. What is to God to God? Spiritual. Walking up right in his eyesight and being obedient. That's what you render to God. So I just want to tell you, thank you all for listening. I pray this message has blessed you all. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they, that people where we all come to a better understanding of your word, of your wisdom, of your kingdom, the life that you have for us on this earth. Lord, we bless you. Thank you all for listening. In Jesus' name, amen.